So I am an urban forester and a consulting arborist. And for 40 odd years, um, I have had the pleasure of working with trees, for the most part in urban areas. Um, if, you can, if you can get an urban tree to grow, you can grow anything. And so that has been my life work. Um, I've done a lot of work with sharing my expertise with citizens, developing participatory programs for citizens, connecting them with professionals, getting citizens involved with management, uh, because no matter how much money a government agency has, no matter how big the staff, there's never enough eyes and ears to care for the urban forest. And so it's everybody's forest, it's a people's forest, and people have to be involved. Almost all the trees that we plant in cities originate in a forest somewhere in the world. And in order to really understand trees, no matter where the tree is, you have to go back to the origins. And the origin is the forest ecosystem. Trees function in a very certain way, and that's part of their genetics. And so trees exist in competition above ground. They're competing for light and space, but they exist in community below ground. They live in association. They are part of a family. And that family is connected via what's called mycorrhizal fungi. Those fungi are part of a tree's root system. And they, those fungi exist in a symbiotic relationship with roots. They are the mechanism through which Trees connect. So trees in the forest don't exist in isolation. They exist in a community. And understanding that, now you move out into the streets of the city where you have trees living in little cutouts in the sidewalk. And they are living in isolation. And trees were never meant to live in isolation. They are part of a family. And so we've all lived through this coronavirus experience and having to exist through forced isolation. And it's my hope that maybe people have learned a little bit about what it's like to live in forced isolation so that we might start using strategies that exist to offer trees a less isolated existence in, in, in how we are asking them to coexist with us so that we give them some of the things that are essential to them. And the way this works is genetics is one thing, and then, in addition to genetics, you have the environment, and the environment is the enabler. So either the environment is enabling, or it is disabling. In the forest, it's an enabler. That forest environment enables the tree's capacity to be the tree it was meant to be. In the city, the way we accommodate trees, or the lack of accommodation, you have an environment that is disabling the capacity of trees to be the tree they were genetically meant to be. And that's the biggest challenge to trees. In addition to inadequate soil, soil that is not living anymore, there's all these factors but the first thing that should be thought about is 
What makes a tree a tree? And you have to go back to the forest to get those answers. So given that we are dealing with a forest tree genetically, um, we often approach the, the planting of trees as just that, that, that you, you have a space, you're doing construction, and, and then comes the idea, oh yes, we should plant some trees. And so you make these holes, or however big or small you make them, and you stick the tree into it. And that's, that's the end of it. But there's all these questions that need to be asked about the place you're going to put that tree in. Um, how much sun will it get during the day? What's the exposure? Um, how wide or narrow is the street? Uh, how tall are the buildings around the tree? What is the wind direction? Is there a prevailing wind and what is that? Once you have those answers, you have to develop a list of trees that can exist with the site-specific, let's call it ingredients, like it's a recipe which it is a recipe. It is a recipe for growing a tree. Now you can figure out what trees would grow with that offering. Once you've selected this great tree, now comes the site preparation to receive the tree. And so roots, trees roots grow three, two and a half to three times beyond the diameter of the crown. But think about a little sidewalk cutout and think about the fact that the tree's root should grow way out there. So what can we do? Well, when we prepare the site, we can create root paths. And these root paths can be constructed. We have strategies for constructing them. And we use uncompacted soil to fill those root paths. And, and that encourages, and, and you bring those root paths right into the place where you're putting this root ball so that the path is right there for roots of the tree to explore. And that's one of the strategies for accommodating not only that tree's roots, but those root paths can be used to connect that tree with its neighbor. And so now you've created the possibility of that tree being able to communicate with its neighbor. And of course, another strategy is not to put trees individually in along the curb, but where you have a corner, two streets coming together, create a cluster planting. Open up that whole sidewalk corner, make this a group planting of trees that belong together. Now we have a little mini, mini example of a forest system where trees can coexist, the soil doesn't have to be sealed, the whole area can create a mini family. So as, as you may have realized, our summers are warmer, the warm weather comes earlier and lasts longer. And that results in a higher temperature on a regular basis, rather than what used to be, where it was just rare and occasional. 30 degrees was not anything normal. So that's the first thing. But more difficult is the change in precipitation patterns. We are not getting enough rain over a staggered period of time. 
So you'll go for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, as we did earlier this spring, and of course at all times, spring. When growth is pushing and growth really needs moisture, we had five weeks of no rain, not one drop of rain. That is the real problem, child. Because of the way we plant in the city, because we are sealing so much soil um, and creating uh, a greater impact from climate change, because think about paving. Paving is either holds heat, but it also re-radiates heat. And so you, this is what we call the urban heat island effect. And, and trees can help mitigate that, but the tree needs to not have the stress load that our planting routine, the lack of creative thinking in how we plan for and design the space we're asking, asking this tree to exist in. So there's big concern over the species that we are currently using. And my response to that is, the tree species you are using would be able to acclimate to some of the changes that we will expect to see if you gave them more of what they need. And if you're not going to, to facilitate the tree's ability to be flexible, ability to accommodate, trees are gonna die. More trees are going to die. So with what we are seeing with climate change, and what we can expect, it becomes more and more of an urgency to start managing trees differently. We wouldn't be able to have cities without our trees because of what they do for the air we breathe and how much they reduce the noise and and how they provide more comfort in a changing climate that is bringing us warmer and warmer temperatures. They give us shade. And if you think of the universe that a tree creates, that it's not just this isolated entity, there's all these birds, there's all these uh, uh, insects, good and bad, that populate the tree's universe. And all of this creates quality of life through all the things they do for us. Our lives would be much poorer without their presence. And because of everything they do for us, they deserve that we are more thoughtful in how we bring them into our, the places and spaces we are asking them to exist in. Nothing less will do. I, I would because, because all of this brings us to the, the question that a lot of people ask, what can I do? What can I do to make a difference? And everybody can be doing something for the trees they coexist with, whether it's in your garden or the tree that lives in front of the house in which you live in. And my idea is that the people who live in cities should be demanding more from the people they are paying to manage the trees we all coexist with in terms of sharing knowledge. 